the Joe Rogan experience. And the idea was the first people to lay eyes on the continental U.S. When that corridor opened up, when that little gap through the glaciers opened up, the first Americans like spilled out onto the American Great Plains, killing mammoths with, with spears. Hmm. As all this new information has emerged, um, th- the dates don't line up anymore. So we, we did a hunting history episode about th- this very question of um, how and when and who were the first people to enter the continent, right? And now um, that was called the ice-free corridor hypothesis, but it's been made more and more untenable by finding these super old sites. For a while, the oldest site we knew about in the New World was in was this site called Monteverde down in Chile. So if people came in at the Bering Land Bridge, why is the oldest known site of human occupation all the way down in Chile? How old is it? It was, it was somewhere around 13, 14. But what oh. about those uh, New Mexico footprints that are 22,000 years old? Again, yeah, it's clouded yeah. picture. There's a lot of the dating. Yeah. The dating on that is clouded. But anyways, it's like antiquity in America is much older than originally thought. Right. So, and then there's now currently the oldest site is on the Columbia River drainage um, near a place called Pittsburgh Landing. Uh, there's a really old site there. And it winds up being that it doesn't line up with the idea of people entering this ice-free corridor because like when did the corridor when was it open when was it possible to pass through but now you have all these older dates and then people are even starting to question the validity of the idea of like that this corridor opened when they thought it did so now the fashionable idea it's it's it seems rock solid and we we film much of the episode up at our up, up at our fish shack um there's this theory now called the kelp highway that you had uh this pretty stable environment all along the Pacific coast. And it was defined by kelp beds, enormous, or enormously rich in fish resources, enormously rich in shellfish. Right. Um, and that the first Americans were, were a seafaring people and all that shit about what glaciers are melted and not melted. And when this and that corridor and land bridges open was a moot point because these were people that um, just came down the coast and they knew how to survive in that marine, that kelp marine environment. And th- they went south and went south and went south. And things remain remarkably similar. And with like great speed, with great speed, all the way down the coast. So all of a sudden there's people in Chile. Wow. And instead of this idea that people came into the Great Plains and then spread to the coast, it's that people came down that route. And you know that really old site, the currently oldest, the currently oldest, like ironclad, absolutely accepted, academic consensus accepted site is that Snake River site, um, or on, on the Columbia drainage. Um, that they came down the coast, and then the the continent was populated by people who just followed these major rivers, these salmon runs and stuff. Coastal fishing people migrated up these rivers, following fish, and then turned into over time became these mammoth hunters and these in, in interior grassland hunters. But their their genesis was in these seafaring people. And as people came down, they kind of filled in. So you go to like, you know, the 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 the, the Klingit or the Haida, right? Um, that live along the, the Alaskan coast now, like that's their ancestors, right? They were the they were they were perhaps people living that way in those places were the first people to enter the continent. So, so my time machine yeah. would be whatever the hell day that was. That's what it would be. To see that, man. Because yeah. picture, like, you know, picture me the first person or the first group of people to, like, to see a continent. Yeah. I mean, you can't even, you know what I mean? Yeah. How do we even know that that's the case, though? We what don't. If there's people that were before that. That's, that. There's an argument that. The thing is, like. There's an argument. There's arguments. Humans came from Africa, right? The, the, it, well, the, yeah. That, that's that's the, where the yeah. original. There's a, the human diaspora yeah. is like anatomically, like the, the, the sort of widely accepted scientific explanation is that anatomically and behaviorally modern humans, um, there was many waves of hominids coming out of Africa, but mm-hmm. sometime around 70,000 years ago, um, our current human ancestors came out. They came into a Europe that was populated by Neanderthals, perhaps other hominids. Um, they kind of won, 
right? And then, and then spread around the world. And the last continent outside of Antarctica, which was never, you know, the last continent to be occupied by humans outside of Antarctica, which arguably was never occupied by humans, would have been South America, was the last, the last stop. Wow. Um, and, and what's they, wild is there's monkeys down there. Yeah. That's what's wild. But man, there's all these, there's this, there's this, there's this theory called the Salutrian hypothesis, which is that, that Northern Europeans came over much much like 10 you know 10 plus thousand years ago there's always these mm -hmm. different ideas that that someone you know someone from somewhere else blew in on a raft there's always this thing but the, but what i'm talking about is a sort of like again the kind of like academically accepted idea the sort of mainstream idea remains and it's supported by genetic linguistic everything is that that humans came out of um the americans that you know, our Native Americans came out of Siberia through a Siberian pathway, probably in waves. You know, the people we now, like if you refer to now like Northern coastal peoples, Eskimo, Inuits, mm -hmm. um, they were a later wave. They, they were different than what became the Athabascans to the south. It was like a later wave. So there could have been repeated waves of people coming but i've always been interested in the first wave yeah whoever they were the right. first wave and when was that yeah. are, you, are you aware of the sage wall in montana no i'm aware of montana <laughs> well, you live there <laughs> <laughs> the sage wall is a recent discovery it, it was on private property and um uh these people uh it was completely covered with woods and uh you know deadfalls and everything and they start clearing it out and they found this thing that looks remarkably like a constructed wall that's the sage wall in montana it's very oh, wow it's very strange it's very strange and it's a vertical wall yeah. it goes down 13 feet under the ground and uh it's long and straight and it's very confusing because it very much looks like placed stones that were cut and moved somehow uh, in this particular way, and uh, there's a lot of d oh, yeah, debate man, about yeah. whether or not that's a wild looking wall. Wild looking. Well, uh -huh. see if you could find the overhead of it, Jamie, because when you look at the overhead, you're like, Jesus Christ, this looks like people put this there. Yeah, the debate is is it natural or man made? Yeah, well, there is some people that think it's man made, and there's some people that think it's natural, but th it's leaning much more towards um, man made. But it's confusing. Because oh, you know, no, I am familiar. Yeah, that. I'm familiar with that area. Yeah, no, I got it's it. It's real weird. Real, yeah, real I mean, weird looking. There's a lot of a lot of natural formations. Yeah, because you get fissures and rocks mm -hmm. that are filled from volcanic yep. activity. Yep. Sure, yeah. it's, it's puzzling. It's definitely. Maybe we'll do an episode on that. There's I a, think we will. <laughs> well, this gentleman right there. See that guy down there with the beard, Jamie? That's yep. the, that's the guy. Uh, I think it's Wandering Wolf on. Um, uh, I think that's his name on uh, YouTube. Yeah. yeah, Wandering Wolf. Uh, he's been studying this for a while. Please ignore his nose ring. Oh, is that what that was? I couldn't tell if he had a bug or if that yeah, was a nose ring. Nose ring. But, like, this yeah, is crazy. That's crazy. It's yeah. crazy because they're flat and straight, and they look fairly uniform, and they look like they're cut into position. Yep. And there's also a bunch of these, uh, you know, like where they would grind things. There's these posts that sit out that look like they're carved outside. That, that are similar to a lot of stuff they find in South America, around yep. like Machu Picchu and stuff like that. It's very, very weird stuff. Well, because if, if that was made by people, who and when and how? Um, yep. Yeah. My go, of, I, I'm, I'm going natural, but I know we'll do a future episode on that yeah. question. <laughs> I, I think natural, too, until you look at some of them. Like some of those images, go back to some of those images, Jamie. Some of those images are like, how the fuck? Like they're so flat and straight. And look at that. That, you know, that, that is insane. From that angle, it's insane. From that, that angle, you would no doubt look and be like, that's a man-made wall. It looks very stacked. 